I saw you in that movie, uh, Crazy Stupid Love. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah. I didn't realize it was you to the end because you're such oh, a- Oh, good. You're such a jerk in it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, that haircut would make anybody a jerk, truly. Uh, I was method. I was not in a good mood having to slick my hair down like that uh, all day long, but- uh, but it was it was fun, you know. It was it was a it, you know I love I love kind of playing the the douchey characters, you know. I sat next I sat next to those guys in high school, so it's kind of my way of getting back at them. Come with me, and you'll be in a world of pure imagination. Take a look, and you'll see. Into your imagination. When did you know you had the voice? Um, I knew I had the voice in seventh grade. I was living uh, a really hellish existence in high school. It was just awful. I was just not making any friends. I was really shy. I was kind of awkward. Um, still, all those things. But <laughs> uh, but back then, it's, it hurts. It hurts even more. Yeah. And uh, be as awkward as you like when you're famous. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Exactly right. Yeah. Thank you. And, uh, and so I had a teacher who said, hey, I've been hearing you in the back of the choir. I think you should step out and sing a solo. And it was my first time singing a solo. I thought I'd be getting wedgies for life after that. <laughs> but I got a standing ovation from the class, and my parents were like in tears. They'd never heard me really sing before. And it was one of those moments that made me realize, you know, just how important that kind of exposure to um, the arts and confidence building through the arts when you're a young person is. It's, it's pivotal, in fact. I might have still been the shy person who never decided to sing publicly if it weren't for that teacher. When did you first hear the term Grobenites? <laughs> At the doctor's office, actually. Uh, really? They said there's a cream for that. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, it's, uh, it, it, it happened after Ally McBeal. Was it? I look up to everything you are. Uh, it's it's uh, it's a name that said, well, there's 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 fifty or a hundred of us now. We're quite passionate. We should come up with a name for ourselves. And I'm on the other side of the screen going, no, no, you don't have to. You don't have to really. <laughs> Fan is fine, you know. Yeah. And uh, and so they were coming up with all sorts of funny names, you know, the grob grobo groboholics and you know grobophiles. I'm thinking <laughs> nothing with files at the end of it, please. And uh, and they came up with grobonites, which is which is it's cute. It's a cute name. It, like you said, it, like I said, it could be could be a an infection or a or a or a type of bug, perhaps. Uh, but um, but they are. I've always said that like the grobonites are like the Navy SEALs of of uh, of fandom. They are the ones that are going to be. At every concert, they're the ones that are at every morning TV show, standing out in the cold. That's what that's what it takes to be a Grobanite, and uh, and the rest of them are just uh, are just diehard fans. Mm-hmm. You've announced you're coming back to New Zealand next year. You know who else is coming to New Zealand who? for the first time is Oprah. I saw. Yeah, yeah, she's doing an evening with Oprah. Yeah, I wish we could combine the two <laughs> and uh, have a musical uh, book club. So tell us, you at one point at least were her most frequent guest. How did that uh, hookup happen? Josh Grobo! Oh my God, Oprah has been so good to me. I mean, she, um, you talk about people writing in. She had me on the first time because she got so many letters. Her first mm. thing that she said was, okay, we've heard you, here he is. And I, don't, I wouldn't have been on that first episode at all if the fans hadn't incessantly written in, just pounded the pavement to get me on that show. That and Gail King, who's <laughs> today still one of my dear friends, just kept telling Oprah, you have to have yeah. him on. So she gave me that first shot. I remember my first time I was on Oprah, uh, I had I had uh, strep and tonsillitis at the exact same time, and uh, somehow pulled through for that first one. But um, yeah, I went on her show, God, eight or nine times, and um, just you know, when you have that audience and you say to that audience, "This is something you should listen to," um, just helped tremendously, tremendously. Mm. So I, I owe a lot to her. <laughs> 